Hi everyone, welcome to Art Talk 179. Today we're talking about artist Michael A. Cummings. He's considered the nation's leading African-American male quilter with an ever-expanding influence on the current generation of quilting artists. He's a native of Los Angeles and he moved to New York City in 1970 to work with the Department of Cultural Affairs. And he began his exploration of the city's rich cultural environment engaging in relationships with many of that era's creative talents, which included artists Norman Lewis, Camille Billops, along with Romare Bearden, as well as his wife. Inspired by Bearden's art and collage making, Cummings began experimenting with collage construction in 1973 and soon moved on to fabric collage compositions. During this period, he also completed his college studies at the State University of New York with an art history degree and classes in studio art. A Harlem resident and a passionate explorer of its history, Cummings lives and works in a 120-year-old Harlem brownstone. The museum-like residence and studio are filled with an eclectic collection of African, African-American, and multicultural art from his international travels, arranged artfully alongside Black memorabilia, period furniture, and different decorative objects. Now retired from a full-time position with the New York State Council on the Arts, he devotes his time to research in African-American culture and quilt making, translating this history into narrative quilts. So here is a quilt that he created highlighting Haitian boat people who were refugees from Haiti that fled the country by boat, usually to South Florida. Between 1972 and 1981, around 55,000 boat people arrived in Florida. Jazz, of course, is an integral part of African-American culture and history, especially in Harlem, where Cummings resides. So he did a series of quilts that he created featuring the kind of improvisational and cool aspect of jazz. Harlem, of course, is the birthplace of jazz and gave us Duke Ellington, Billie Holiday, Louis Armstrong, and Ella Fitzgerald, just to name a few. Cummings focused on butterflies in 2001, creating this series of quilts. And I really like these um, quilts because the fabric of them mimics the kind of matte and powdery nature of a butterfly's wings. Slave Ship Henrietta Marie is one of his more notable works. It's a very graphic and realistic depiction of what enslaved African people had to endure on the ships that brought them across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, on its first voyage in 1697, the ship carried more than 200 people from Africa that were sold as slaves in Barbados. They endured cramped quarters, offering little to no movement during the long voyage, and were subject to unsanitary conditions and little food. The Henrietta Marie sank off the Florida Keys in 1700 and wasn't discovered until 1972. Cummings tells the story of the people from that ship in this quilt. Underneath them is a pattern mimicking the red and white stripes of the American flag, and he also uses traditional African patterns to honor their ancestry. Here are two of multiple quilts he made featuring former President Obama. On the right is a quilt devoted to young Obama and details his history before becoming president. It features his birthplace of Honolulu, time studying at Occidental College and Columbia University, and the community organizing that he did in the South Side of Chicago. The quilt on the left shows Obama meeting with Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu as they discuss relevant issues between Israelis and Palestinians, specifically the situation in Gaza, something that sadly has escalated and is still an ongoing issue. Here are two quilts that Cummings created featuring American writer and civil rights activist, James Baldwin. Baldwin was, was born in Harlem and often wrote about themes of race, sexuality, masculinity, and class. Cummings quilts feature crosses. Baldwin had a complicated relationship with religion. He was uncomfortable that he felt attracted to men instead of women and sought refuge in the church. Both quilts also feature the American flag, and reference Baldwin's work for civil and voting rights. Cummings quilts are detailed and nuanced, and the longer you look at them, the more detail you'll find about what he was trying to represent. In 1992, 
May C. Jemison was the first African-American woman to travel in space. She is a doctor, engineer, and NASA astronaut, and this quilt celebrates her amazing achievements. This quilt is an homage to Nelson Mandela, former president of South Africa and anti-apartheid leader and activist. The quilt features Robin Island and Victor Verster along the sides, uh, which were two of the prisons that he was incarcerated in. It also has the South African flag, as well as the ANC, which stands for the African National Congress. Here's a quilt of Frida Kahlo, an artist we've covered numerous times in our art talks. Uh, she was a Mexican surrealist artist that often created self-portraits of how she saw herself. And in a way, this quilt kind of mimics her surrealist style and the sort of enhanced features that she portrayed, including her iconic flower crown. Igungun, in the broadest sense, is any Yoruba masquerade or masked costumed figure. More specifically, it's a Yoruba masquerade for ancestor reverence or the ancestors themselves as a collective force. The Yoruba people are a West African ethnic group who mainly inhabit parts of Nigeria, Benin, and Togo. These quilts are a beautiful representation of the color and fabric used in the costumes themselves. Cummings has let his intuition guide his work as he constructs his quilts. He said that he could use as many as 30 different fabrics in one quilt, changing colors, fabric texture, and patterns as each quilt is built from rough sketches to these three-dimensional works of art. Cummings even taught himself how to dye various fabrics to achieve the correct color composition for each project. Cummings quilts can be found in private collections belonging to Hollywood greats, such as Whoopi Goldberg, and in museums around the globe, such as the Brooklyn Museum and the Museum of Art and Design. Thank you.